The chairman of the House Oversight Committee, Republican James Comer of Kentucky, says that if New York Congressman George Santos is found to have broken campaign finance laws, he will be removed from Congress. This as negative headlines outlining how Santos fabricated essentially his entire resume have been published nonstop, leading members of both parties to call for his resignation, including reports that Santos worked at what the SEC called a Ponzi scheme. Here now to discuss all the latest on Santos with us, Niall Stanich, White House column with our partners at the Hill. Niall, it's good to see you. Good to see you too, Natasha. So Niall, this is the first time a high profile member of the GOP has actually come out and said anything like this since all of this uh, started. What is new about this and what are the chances we actually see him get tossed out of Congress? For a start, this really ratchets up the pressure on Congressman Santos. We haven't previously seen so senior a Republican as James Comer suggest that he could be ousted from Congress. You and I were just talking last night about whether he could be removed, and I was pretty skeptical of that. I think the possibility of it has now increased. The other thing that was really interesting about Comer's remarks were they were crystal clear. There wasn't any suggestion of, oh, well, if he's found guilty of campaign finance violations, we'll look at it again or we'll examine it. He said quite clearly and unequivocally that Congressman Santos would be removed from Congress if that happened. That requires a two-thirds vote of all House members, but it is more possible or plausible tonight than it was last night. And what is this about breaking campaign finance laws? Is it kind of coming out of left field or is there a potential intel that we just don't know about yet? I think from the start, one of the most serious elements of the whole Santos matter has been the suspiciousness of some of his financial dealings. Not just the story that you alluded to where he was working for a firm that was later accused of being a Ponzi scheme, but also in terms of his own personal finances and how they affected his campaign. He loaned around $700,000 to his 2022 campaign, having listed his earnings just two years before at around $50,000 a year. How he moved from one position to the other has never been clear. Now, of course, people can get wealthy quickly by legitimate means, but it has never really been satisfactorily explained. And I think that's what is going to be looked into much more closely. OK, I appreciate that context. And meanwhile, another new development in the Santos saga, various outlets reporting that other Republicans may have been aware of Santos's deception long before the general public. What are you tracking in terms of that? So this is a, an interesting story that there was an awareness at a lower level, I suppose, of these questions around George Santos when he was a candidate. For the most part, Republicans have tended to say that they weren't aware of these issues. But that is now increasingly in question. And certainly when you see the pushback against him from Republicans in his own area, Nassau County, uh, just outside of New York City, it does suggest that certainly there's no reservoir of goodwill to draw on and, and people clearly getting pretty tired of the whole Santos story, even within the GOP. Right. And short of violating campaign finance, finance finance laws or actual criminal behavior. The chair of the Oversight Committee says that Santos cannot be removed from Congress just for lying. Is there truly no, no recourse here? And what kind of precedent does this set? There is recourse. I, I think uh, Congressman Comer's point is really that it wouldn't happen just because Santos was caught in lying. Anyone can be ejected by that two-thirds vote that I mentioned. It just generally requires something very egregious. Uh, to put it in some kind of historical context, only five members of Congress have ever been ejected, and three of those were for fighting for the Confederacy in the Civil War. So it's not something that is, uh, it's not a step that is taken very easily. And I think that's why it really requires something very grave to be found against a member before other members are willing to take that step. Do you think at this point we have crossed that threshold? I don't at this point. I think we might get to that threshold. I think the pressure is rising, but I don't think we've uh, come close to that threshold yet. I think it would probably require absolutely clear-cut guilt of something more than just, uh, you know, being a fabulist. All right. Niall Stanich, always appreciate the insight. Thank you for your time. Thank you.
Thank you for watching. Go to newsnationnow.com to find News Nation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of News Nation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.